Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kinney. New Year's Eve. Well, in case you're wondering what I'm doing in my room at 9 o'clock p.m. on New Year's Eve, let me fill you in. Earlier today, me and Manny were horsing around in the basement. I found a tiny black ball of thread on the carpet, and I told Manny it was a spider. Then I held it over him, pretending like I was going to make him eat it. Yeah! Right when I was about to let Manny go, he slapped my hand and made me drop the thread. And guess what? The fool swallowed it. Well, Manny completely lost his mind. He ran upstairs to where Mom was, and I knew I was in big trouble. Manny told Mom I made him in a spider. I told her there was no spider and that it was just a tiny ball of thread. Mom brought Manny over to the kitchen table. Then she put a seed, a raisin, and a grape on the plate and told Manny to point to the thing that was the closest in size to the piece of thread he swallowed. Manny took a while to look over the things on the plate. Then he walked over to the refrigerator and pulled out an orange. So that's why I got sent to bed at 9 at 9 o'clock, and I'm not downstairs watching the New Year's Eve special on TV. And that's also why my only New Year's resolution is to never play with Manny again. January. Wednesday. I found a way to have some fun with the big wheel Rally got me for Christmas. So I came up with this game where one guy rides down the hill and the other guy tries to knock him off with a football. Rowley was the first one down the hill, and I was the thrower. It's a lot harder to hit a moving target than I thought. Plus, I didn't get a lot of practice. It took Rowley like 10 minutes to walk the big wheel back up the hill after every trip down. Rowley kept asking to switch places and have me be the one who rides the big wheel. But I'm no fool. That thing was hitting 35, 35 miles an hour, and it didn't have any brakes. So, do you want to have a... <laughs> turn now? No, thanks. I'm not as good as you. Anyways, I never did knock Rally off the big wheel today, but I guess I have something to work at over the rest of, of Christmas vacation. Thursday. I was headed up to Rally's, uh, to Rally's today to play our big wheel game again, but Mom said I had to finish my Christmas thank yous before I went out anywhere. I thought I could just crank out my thank you cards in half an hour, but when it came, be but when it came to actually writing them, my mind would blank. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, it's not easy writing thank you notes for stuff you didn't want in the first place. I started with the non-clothes items because I thought they'd be the easiest, but after two or three cards, I realized I was practically writing the same thing every time. So I wrote up a general form on the computer with blanks for, this, for the things that needed to change. Writing the cards from there was a breeze. Dear Aunt Lydia, thank you so much for the awesome encyclopedia. How did you know I wanted that for Christmas? I love the way the encyclopedia looks on my shelf. All my friends will be so jealous that I have my very own encyclopedia. Thank you for making this the best Christmas ever. Sincerely, Greg. My system worked out pretty well for the first couple of gifts, but after that, not so much. Dear Aunt Loretta, thank you so much for the awesome pants. How did you know I wanted that for Christmas? I love the way the pants look on my legs. All my friends will be so jealous that I have my very own pants. Thank you for making this the best Christmas ever. Sincerely, Greg. Friday. I finally knocked Rowley off the big wheel today, but it didn't happen the way I, had, I expected. I was trying to hit him in the shoulder, but I missed, and the football went under the front tire. Rowley tried to break his fall by sticking out his arms, but he landed pretty hard on his left hand. And I figured he'd just shake it off and get right back on the bike, but he didn't. I tried to cheer him up, but all the jokes that usually crack him up weren't working. So, I knew he must be hurt pretty bad. Hey, look at me, I'm your dad, dar dar dar. <laughs> Monday. 
Christmas vacation is over, and now we're back at school. And you remember Riley's big wheel accident? Well, he broke his hand. Uh, and now he has to wear a cast. And today everyone was crowding around him like he was a hero or something. Does it still hurt? A little, I guess. You poor thing. I tried to cash in on some of Riley's new popularity, but it totally backfired. I'm the one who broke his hand. You meanie. At lunch, a bunch of girls invited Rowley over to their table so they could feed him. What really ticks me, what really ticks me off about that is that Rowley is right-handed, and it's his left hand that's broken, so he can feed himself just fine. Here comes the airplane. Yum, yum. Tuesday. I realized Riley's injury thing is a pretty good racket, so I decided it was time for me to have an injury of my own. I took some gauze from home, and, r and I wrapped up my hand to make it look like I was hurt. It's a raging infection caused by a splinter that was left untreated. I couldn't figure out why the girls weren't swarming me like they swarmed Riley, but then I realized what the problem was. See, the cast is a great gimmick because everyone wants to sign their name on it, but it's not exactly easy to sign gauze with a pen. So I came up with a solution that I thought was just as good. Would you like to be the first one to sign my sympathy sheet? That idea was a total bust too. My bandage did end up attracting attention from a couple of people, but believe me, they were not the type of people I was going for. Can I peek at your infection? Go away. Monday. Last week we started the third quarter at school. So, I now, so now I have a whole bunch of new classes. One of the classes I signed up for is something called independent study. I wanted to sign up for home econo econo home economics 2 because I was pretty good at home economics 1 but being good at sewing does not exactly buy you popularity points at school. Hey look Greg has a purse. Actually it's an embroidered book bag. Okay Percy. Anyway this independent study thing is an experiment they're trying out at our school for the first time. The idea is the class gets assigned a project, and then you have to work on it together with no teacher in the room from the whole quarter. The, <coughs> the catch is that when you're done, everyone in your group gets the same grade. I found out that Ricky Fisher is in my class, which could be a big problem. Ricky's big claim, claim to fame is that he'll pick the gum off the bottom of a desk and chew it if you, don't, if you pay him 50 cents. So... I don't really have high hopes for our final grade. Oh. Tuesday. Today, we got our independent study assignment. And guess what it is? We have to build a robot. At first, everybody kind of freaked out because we thought we were going to have to build the robot from scratch. Oh. But Mr. Darnell told us we don't have to build an actual robot. We just need to come up with ideas for what our robot might, might look like and what kinds of things it would be able to do. Then he left the room, and we were on our own. We started brainstorming right away. I wrote down a bunch of ideas on the blackboard. The robot would do my homework, do the dishes, make my breakfast, brush my teeth, though. Everybody was pretty impressed by, with my ideas, uh, but it was easy to come up with them. All I did was write down all the things I hate doing myself. Uh, but a couple of girls got, to the got up to the front of the room, and they had some ideas of their own. They erased my list and drew up their own plan. They wanted to invent a robot that would give you dating advice and have ten types of lip gloss on its fingertips. Uh, all us guys thought this was the most stupid idea we have ever heard. So we ended up splitting into two groups, girls and boys. The boys went to the other side of the room while the girls stood around talking. Now that we, now that we had all the serious workers in one place, we got to work. Someone had an idea that, it, that you can say your name to the robot and it can say it back to you. Hi, Bob. It is very nice to meet you, Bob. 
But then someone else pointed out that you shouldn't be able to use bad words for your name because the robot should be able to curse. Shouldn't be able to curse. So, so we, so we decided we should come up with a list of all the bad words the robot shouldn't be able to say. We came up with all the regular bad words, but then Ricky Fisher came up with twenty more the rest of us had never even heard of before. So Ricky ended up being one of the most valuable contributors to on this project. Right before the bell rang, Mr. Darnell came back in the room to check on our proge- progress. He picked up the piece of paper we were writing on and he read it over. To make long story short, independent study is canceled for the rest of the year. Well, at least it is for us boys. So if the robots in the future are going around with cherry lip gloss for fingers, at least you know how it started. Thursday. In school today, they had a general assembly and showed the movie It's Great to Be Me, which they show us every year. The movie is all about how you should be happy with who you are and not change anything about yourself. Uh, To be honest with you, I think that's a really dumb message to be telling kids, especially the ones at my school. It's great to be me. Shove. Ha ha. Later on, they made an announcement that there are some openings on the safety patrols, and that got me thinking. If someone picks on a safety patrol, it can get them suspended. The way I figure it, I can use any extra protection I can get. Plus, I realized that maybe being in a position of authority could be good for me. Can we please cross the street now? Nope. But we've been standing here for an hour. I went down to Mr. Winsky's office and signed myself up, and I got Rowley to sign up, too. I thought Mr. Winsky would make us do a bunch of chin-ups or jumping jacks or something to prove we were up for the job, but he just handed us our belts and badges on the spot. Mr. Winsky said the openings were for a special assignment. Our school is right next to the elementary school, and they've got a half-day kindergarten there. He wants us to walk the morning session kids home in the middle of the day. I realized that meant we would miss 20 minutes of pre-algebra. Rowley must have figured that out too, because he started to speak up, but I gave him a wicked pinch underneath the desk before he could finish his sentence. But we would miss... Ah! I couldn't believe my luck. I was getting instant bully protection and a free pass from half of pre-algebra, and I didn't even have to lift a finger... Tuesday. Today was our first day as safety patrols. Me and Rowley don't technically have stations like all the other patrols, so that means we don't have to stand out in the freezing cold for an hour before school. But that didn't stop us from coming to the cafeteria for the free hot chocolate they hand out to the other patrols before homeroom. Another great perk is that you get to show up 10 minutes late for first period. I'm telling you, I've got it made with this safety patrol thing. At 12.15, me and Rowley left school and walked the kindergartners home. The whole trip ate up 45 minutes, and there were only 20 minutes of pre-algebra left when we got back. Walking the kids home was no sweat, but one of the kindergartners started to smell a little funny, and I think maybe he had an accident in his pants. He tried to let me know about it, but I just stared straight ahead and kept walking. I'll take these kids home, but believe me, I didn't sign up for any diaper duty.